and welcome to the back to school edition of and they're off steve you've been back and forth to saratoga commuting for the last month you must be delighted to be back home in the new york metropolitan area once and for all yes i, I happen to be in new jersey by the way i'm not no new york metropolitan that's area, that's the do. metropolitan area come on. well it is to you yes it's uh it's bye-bye Beverly's and so long Sergio's, <laughs> but I do have a month of big September stakes at Belmont to look forward to. Oh, wait a minute. I just remembered. There are no more big September stakes at Belmont. <laughs> Naira has either moved or gotten rid of all of them. <laughs> they, they, are, they are no longer there. None. Zero. The Woodward, gone. The Futurity, gone. After only 122 years. The Matron, gone. The Man of War, gone. The Ruffian, gone. The Gazelle, gone. <laughs> Naira has successfully <laughs> taken its most exciting month of racing and turned it into a month of mundane racing. So much for history and tradition. Bye-bye to that. See you in October. <laughs> well, of course, some of those have been already run at Saratoga. Others are truly bye-bye gone. But, uh, hey, Steve. Yes. Why don't you uh, watch yeah. some baseball games? You know, there's some good pennant races going on. I, I, I think it'll take up some of your time. I've been watching the highlights. I know what's going on. F yeah. Football season starts Thursday, so forget, don't talk to forget, me about baseball. Forget football. Stop it. You got your Phillies in a, in a tie forget for football. first place. Pay attention. Dallas, Cow Dallas Cowboys, Ugh. Super Bowl winners. Stop. Dall you heard it here, folks. Did, Dallas didn't Cowboys. Didn't I hear that last year from you? I think you did. <laughs> yeah, very good. Let's put that in perspective. Well, this is the year. All right, very good. Steve, horse racing constantly <laughs> struggles with how to reach more people, how to get more media coverage. Usually we fail miserably, except for the Kentucky Derby, to get folks out there in America to pay attention. And then something like this happens. Stable Boy, roll this clip, please. Here come my wife knows everything, and the wife doesn't know on the far outside. Little Miss Macho is fourth or into the stretch. Lady Mutata, my wife knows everything. Center of the track, the wife doesn't know. Into the final furlong, my wife knows everything. The wife doesn't know. They're one, two. Of course they are. My wife knows everything in front. To the outside, the wife doesn't know. My wife knows everything. The wife doesn't know. My wife knows everything. More than the wife doesn't know. Whew. That race call from Monmouth Park's Larry Colmus was picked up and played on ESPN Sports Center. Good Morning America, The Today Show, World News Tonight, Inside Edition. I don't know. It might have been on Keeping Up with the Kardashians. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, wh what do you make of this old wives' tale uh, becoming more popular than anything else that we do here as a sport? Hey, I, I even heard it on an oldies rock station, uh, <laughs> just a, a basic local station. I couldn't believe it. I'm hearing it uh, on the radio. Yeah. Look, it was a once-in-a-lifetime call, and Larry pulled it off perfectly. It was understated. It was not over-embellished. He let the names speak for themselves and just added a couple of, you know, little touches of humor to assist it. And you know what? I'm really happy for Larry because I think he deserves this. He's one of the best uh, uh, track announcers in the country. And this was his time in the sun, and he took advantage of it. So good for him. Yeah, it was a great call. Like you said, understand. Just a line like, of course they are. I think it makes everybody laugh out loud. You oh, know? it's great. And, it's great. It's great. Understated and funny. That's what you want. Yeah. I think, you know, Steve, I think this shows the, the wide uh, acceptance that this thing got and the wide coverage that it got. That people really would like horse racing if they give it a chance. You know, I mean, you, they you, do. Sure. you can't name baseball players with names like this. You can't name football players with names like this. You know, maybe, maybe we should have a thing where every horse, every racetrack should, should have one day a week where they let fans, like, name the horses and name them after actors or actresses or athletes or funny names. And, you know, based on this, it might actually work. 
Well, actually, you do have baseball players named like this. Don't forget about who's on first and what's on second. <laughs> okay. All right. But, uh, you know, I, I think this is great for the sport. And who knows? This could actually lead to something. I don't know. Anyway, congratulations to Larry Colmus on that. Speaking of events that could actually bring new fans to horse racing, the feature film Secretariat is due out in early October. Now, this film, for all you horse racing nuts and fanatics out there, like every movie, it is going to have scenes in it that aren't truthful and faithful to what actually happens in the sport. This is what is called as artistic license in making movies. But let's get past that for a second. Steve Haskin, you have seen a preview of Secretariat while you were up in Saratoga. For the layman out there, if you can take your expert's cap off for a second, do you Ooh, think that uh, middle America, the non-horse racing fans out there, what do you think they'll feel about this film? I, I, th I, th I think they'll like it a lot. Um, you know, first, let me say that I, I really do want this film to succeed. Uh, I think racing needs for it to succeed, so I am pulling for it. And, you know, I kept reminding myself going in that, you know, as a, look at it as a novice fan, look at it as just, you know, an ordinary racing fan or just somebody who's not even a racing fan. Yeah. You know, sometimes you can't do that. Uh, so, you know, I would say it's a very good Disney movie. And it should appeal to the masses, which is the most important thing. I think that's all they're trying to do, just like uh, Seabiscuit. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, I also will say that the photography and the direction were outstanding. Um, I've never seen racing shown with such a dramatic flair. It, it was similar to almost like the uh, stop action camera that they use, like in the movie The 300. Um, it was just, it was magnificent. There were some other touches, too, where the camera really zoomed in right on Secretariat's eye in the starting gate and zoomed in right on Sham's eye in the starting gate. You could get the, f the, the feel of it, the flavor of it, and just seeing the close-up of the jockey's hands grabbing onto the horse's mane. I mean, and I, like I said, the way it was filmed was unlike anything you've ever seen. Uh -huh. So, you know, in that, in that regard, it was really spectacular. I, I think it's worth seeing it just for that. Good. Uh, I thought the story of Penny Tweedy was compelling, uh, even maybe even more so than the story of the horse. And, of, uh, of course, yeah. Diane Lane really yeah. got into the role and was great. But, look, as a racing person, to be prepared, there were numerous scenes in there that were utterly ridiculous right. and laughable. And I'm not going to list them because there are too many of them. <laughs> and I don't want to ruin the, fan, the, uh, the movie for... Yeah. Uh, for fans out there who I want them to go in with an open mind. I certainly don't want to uh, yeah. say anything ahead of time to make them start looking for these uh, for these uh, crazy scenes. Well, let, let's um, face it, there's, a, there's a lot more non-racing people out there than there are racing people. I think we can lose sight oh, of that yeah. sometimes. <laughs> right, but, and, I think, and I think somebody like, uh, you know, Pancho Martin is certainly not going to like the movie for his portrayal. And uh, the only thing I will say, if you're going to film the Belmont Stakes at Keeneland, which is like filming the French Connection in Rock Springs, Wyoming, try at least to hide the fact that it's Keeneland. This turned out to be a travel log <laughs> for Keeneland. I mean, with the grandstand and the rolling hills, uh, I mean, it was so unlike Belmont Park. It was just hard to picture this being the Belmont Stakes. All right, and I'm I will prepare people for a bizarre bit of a, a bizarre song uh, to be, that was played during the stretch run of the Belmont and then continued through the end of the movie. All right, uh, I'm glad you're not listening but, things. Uh, it's, not, that's it. I said that's it. Leave it. There's a lot right. more. But listen, go see it. You'll enjoy it. Okay. It's nice that you can be objective uh, given your irrational obsession with uh, Diane Lane, who does play uh, Penny Chenery Tweedy in there. So uh, we thank you for, for your objectivity. Did you have any bonbons during the screening? Um, I did not. Okay. And don't make fun of my uh, don't make fun of my relationship with Diane Lane just because I have a schoolboy <laughs> crush on her and <laughs> I know, would be a massive <laughs> yeah. just because I'd be a massive quivering jello uh, in her dazzling presence. Yes, I'm does sorry. Does not mean uh, I'm, I'm very sorry. <laughs> I know you're sensitive about your whatever it is. It's creepy. All right, Magna yes. Steve has announced a 5.5 million dollar bonus for any horse that wins the Preakness Stakes after winning two prep races at either Gulfstream or Santa Anita. 
In Florida, you can win either the Holy Bull or the Fountain of Youth and then the Florida Derby and be eligible for the big bonus if you win the Preakness. Out in California, if you win the Robert Lewis or the San Felipe and then win the Santa Anita Derby, you will be eligible for this huge bonus if you win the Preakness. Steve, will we possibly yes. see a qualifying horse now skip the Kentucky Derby in order to have a better chance to win the Preakness? Oh, don't even hint at such a thing. <laughs> don't even hint at it. But it would not surprise me because everybody in this sport in the long run uh, is out for themselves. And I'm not talking about a, an individual person, but I'm just talking about racetracks and, uh, and, and a lot of the owners, uh, especially Frank Stronick. So, you know what? The heck with the Derby. <laughs> the heck with the Triple Crown. Who needs immortality? Who needs the ultimate glory of horse racing? Who needs to do the sporting thing? You, when you can get the money, mm. go for the money. That's what I say. And don't forget, you'll be able to tell your grandchildren, I won the Holy Bull and the Preakness. <laughs> yeah, but you can grandpa. also give them an inheritance. Listen, Steve, we talk to Horstner all the time, and every single one of them will always say, my dream is to win the Kentucky Derby. But what if you're sitting on two qualifying wins, you're eligible for the bonus, and you draw the rail for the Derby? What happens if you're sitting on two qualifying wins and your horse, let's face it, not every horse who runs in the Derby is 100%. There are a lot of horses that run because it's the Derby and they might be hurting a little bit. What if your horse isn't quite right and you're 50-50 and you automatically would run in the Derby, but now, hey, let me wait the two weeks and go to the freak this in the five million. This, it could happen. I can just see visions of looking at Lucky in these <laughs> owners' heads. Right. By saying, oh, my God, do I want to subject my horse to that? But, right. uh, look. Now, it, of course, know, he, he went on assign... and won anyway, the Freakness. But yes. wouldn't, have he had, wouldn't he have had a better chance to win the Freakness if he hadn't run in the Derby? I don't know. Oh, well, you, you, you don't know. But, look, uh, you want to think that the Derby's the Derby. I mean, you want to think that that's what you want to win more than anything yes whether you want to win it more than five and a half million dollars yeah i don't know because look and you can you, you can be this person who will tell their grandchildren their grandchildren that that they won the holy bull in the preakness but then their grandchildren say but grandpa what happened to, uh, what happened in the kentucky derby and they'll say oh I didn't run in the Kentucky Derby yeah, Grandpa, because I wanted to get the money to pay for your college. That's right. Grandpa will say, here, take 10 grand and go to the movies. I'm rich. <laughs> Very right. interesting. And, well, let's listen, hope, let's we, hope it, 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 Kudos to Frank Strada. I, kudos to Magna. Five million. Oh, yeah, great. This is going to be exciting, you know, so listen. I agree. Yeah, yes. we're, just, we're, just, we're just kidding around here. I think it will be exciting. Uh, you know, uh, Gulfstream Park moved their dates for Florida Derby again. For the third time now it's going to be competing with all the other races so it's going to be even crazier yeah. but look let's hope it works out and let's hope we get some you know better horses in the preakness and um yes who knows and we'll have a better shot now of getting horses going from the derby to the preakness because yes. now everybody's skipping if they don't win the derby they skip the preakness Absolutely. but here if you win yes. those other two lose the derby right. you're going to come back in the preakness anyway Absolutely. so you will get a you know at least yes. the florida derby winner the sanita derby yes. winner it's all good all right Steve, oh, we've yeah. been uh, both railing at Oak Tree ever since it renamed the Lady Secret Stakes, the Zenyatta, and that was before the big mare was unretired this year. You implored Zenyatta's connections not to run in a race named after her. Stable boy, I hate to wake you up again, but roll this clip, please. <laughs> do not, and I repeat, do not taunt the racing gods by running Zenyatta in the Zenyatta Stakes. They don't take kindly to things like that. Uh, you, unless you want them to hurl down one of their lightning bolts on you, keep away from the Zenyatta stakes. Steve, now that it's become obvious that uh, the Zenyatta is exactly where Zenyatta's connections plan to run Zenyatta, those connections have asked Oak Tree to re rename the race The Lady's Secret. Do you feel a measure of vindication, sir? Uh, I feel a measure of, of feeling better than I did before that. Let's put it that way. Uh, I just say, well done, to, well done to you guys. You have appeased the racing gods. Now Zenyatta can go out there and do her thing without any celestial interference. Right. What more could you want? 
Yeah, I'd you never, know, if she's yes. going to go out there. She doesn't have this matzo ball hanging over her head, as Jerry Seinfeld would say. Well, they, they should have never dissed Lady Seeger to begin with. As we've exactly. repeatedly said, there are other races, and Zenyatta <laughs> certainly is uh, deserving of a race named after just not that race. Stable boy. Fresh you off your pick of first dude in the Travers. Congratulations for nothing once again. How's your Twitter traffic going? I, it's, it's, it's going good. But, uh, you know, I, when I saw that photo, I couldn't focus on the name. And I saw the, the letters F and D. I thought my horse had, uh, had, had barely missed it. But turned out it was a uh, fly down. Ah, oh, I, I, I was wondering where he was going. Lenny, do you, have a, do, you have a do you have a clue what he just said? Yes, he's saying that he saw FD, although who knows where he saw the FD, and he, he's equating fly down with first dude. He, a very cute uh, mnemonic device there. Hey, I'd also like to point out we shot, a, we shot an interview with Diane Lane back, back at the Derby uh, on, the, uh -huh. on the red carpet. Um, so it's, I don't know where Steve was. Um, and then that people should go back and check out the uh, Penny Chenery uh, interview we, did, we shot. He's so. a walking marketing uh, campaign, Steve. Yes, I, I must have been under the red carpet watching. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> under the rug. We'd like to thank our viewers. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Darby Dan Farm, who, by the way, had enjoyed two victories at Saratoga with Offspring of Memories of Silver, who happens to be one of my favorite mayors of all time. So congratulations to Darby Dan. We'll be back at you in two weeks. That is on September 22nd. Steve, see you in New Jersey. Take care. Yes, you too. See you in October at Belmont. <laughs> Red October. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.